Hi everybody, welcome back to Living Our American Dream. My name's Matt, and in this video, I'm going to talk about my tractor PTO powered generator setup that I use for backup power for my house. With the gaining popularity of a compact tractor, regardless of what brand you might have, uh, and to be honest, regardless of what size you might have, a power takeoff generator is actually not a bad idea for a backup power source. Let me show you my setup and we'll talk about this a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about this thing for a minute. So this is a typical, what I would consider a typical PTO powered generator. Uh, when you buy a unit like this, you can order it with uh, several different ways that you can mount it. Some people mount them on a trailer. I prefer to have it mounted on this carry-all. This is a 15,000 kilowatt generator, uh, 15,000 kilowatts. So to size one of these things to your tractor, you need to know what your PTO horsepower is. Not your engine horsepower, your PTO horsepower. So as a general rule of thumb, if you take your PTO horsepower and divide that by two, that's how many kilowatts uh, your tractor could potentially power at its full power potential. Um, in my case, I'll, I'll spell you the math for that, but in my case, it's, it's, it's divided by two. In my case, we have a 30 power, uh, sorry, a 30 horsepower PTO. Uh, 30 divided by 2 nicely sizes to 15 just so happens to work out that way now if you had a smaller tractor say you had a 20 horsepower PTO um, you could still use this size generator but it would only be able to generate the tractor engine would only be able to generate uh, 10 kilowatts so when you're sizing your generator keep that in mind um, so the setup for my house arrangement, I have this pre-cut and sized cord that I use with two ends. One of these ends is going to plug into the generator. The other one is a, uh, it's actually a generator cord. Now what you want to do is you want to use this type of a generator power cord for this reason. If I plug this end into the generator, and I have it engaged and the generator running for some reason and I decide that uh, I haven't plugged this in yet but I'm going to go plug it in. If I have live prongs here, in other words something that I can touch, these are going to be live, live from the generator power and you could actually hurt yourself or you know short something out or damage some of the equipment. On this particular one we plug this in here. This receptacle is powered by a 50 amp breaker or supplied by a 50 amp breaker which I leave in the off position until I'm ready to turn it on at the last minute. I actually engage the house from here um, when, I, when I back up the house. So I leave everything off. Um, there's a couple of additional receptacles on here that typically I don't get used. But we're going to run this other end over to the house. We'll show you that now. We're going to take this twist lock. We're going to put it in, in here. maybe there we go so I haven't had it in there in a little while so it goes in nice and tight nice and snug I could probably tighten this box up on the house a little bit but you get the idea now I want to show you the interlock at my electrical panel okay so here's my main house electrical panel and you guys can see the shadow um, I don't actually have a power outage right now we're doing this for educational purposes if you watch my channel you would have watched a video very recently of that interlock being installed. Now, the purpose of this interlock is if you're gonna back feed your electrical panel via a breaker, like I do here, you need some way in ensuring that you don't have your system connected to the grid still. Now, the reason for that is, let's say uh, we didn't turn this main breaker off we're connected to the power lines outside still 
via this breaker. And if I back feed power to my panel here, I'm also back feeding it up through this breaker and out into the power lines. Now the danger of that is somebody working on those lines, or maybe there's a down line somewhere, um, you would be energizing that line and putting those folks in danger um, if you don't turn that off. The way that this works, and maybe this will get dark, I'm not sure, but in the event of a power outage, you're going to turn your main breaker off, and then you're going to slide this thing up out of the way. Now we can't slide this up unless this breaker is off because the little switch is in your way. So we can slide that out of the way because we know where our main is off. And now we can go ahead and turn this breaker on. Now if you can see this, this is our generator breaker now. And go ahead and turn that on. And it wouldn't be allowed to be turned on unless this slide was moved up out of the way. So you see how that works. That slide just kind of slides up and down. And uh, when it's up, this has to be off, which allows you to turn this on. This has to be off to slide it back down before you can turn the main back on. So that's the gist of how that works. Now for the purpose of this YouTube video, I'm gonna start the generator and I'm gonna go ahead and power up the house and everything like I normally would. It's gonna get really loud, so I'm just gonna explain to you right now what I'm gonna do. And then I'll have the camera on it when I do it. So we're gonna start the tractor and we're going to engage the PTO. Then we're gonna come back here before we turn anything on and we're gonna watch this gauge right here. This gauge is gonna tell me voltage and we're gonna want that needle right up in the green right here, okay? So we get up in the green and everything's running good, the tractor's warmed up, then we can go ahead and engage the breaker that I showed you that was under here, the 50 amp breaker, and that should bring everything in the house on. The setup you can see out the window looks like this. A couple points of interest that I want to make. Uh, you want to make sure that your tractor is in neutral, your park brake is set, and that you're parked in a safe location. Um, just in case you decide to, you know, my phone's on the dash for right now, for example, if I go over there to grab it and I happen to bump into the hydrostat pedal, I don't want this thing to take off on me. And at high RPMs, going to go pretty quick. So put it in neutral. You'll notice that the, the seat is flipped up on the, on the Kubota. They've got the three position seat. It senses whether you're sitting, whether you're not there, and whether the seat is flipped up. The seat flipped up allows the power takeoff to continue to operate when no one is there. And it's, it's for, on a farm tractor, it would be for running like, a, like an auger or something, um, for example. And on this type of tractor, the use would be perfect uh, design for the PTO takeoff generator. Okay, listed behind me, I have a few pros and cons to talk about briefly. Um, when comparing a PTO power generator to a standby system, like you would have like a Generac system like that, uh, with an automatic transfer switch, 
The con to the PTO system is it is not standby. So you have, you have to be there for that. Um, if you're comparing this system to a typical uh, portable generator that you kind of got to wheel out to the house and hand pull start it um, and still make that interconnection, this is not necessarily a con. Um, the next con listed right here is tractor availability. So tractor availability is maybe sometimes in a power outage, you might want to use your tractor for something other than generating power. So in my case, what I typically do is we will run the tractor for about three or four hours and do whatever we need to do in the household, um, whether that's showering, uh, cooking dinner, doing laundry, you know, let the house and the, the freezers and the refrigerators get back to temperature. And then we go back to basically not having power because it's actually okay to not necessarily have power 100% of the time. The last con that I have listed here is fuel. And what I mean by fuel is you have a limited supply of fuel depending on how much you keep on site. In my case, I keep between 20 and 60 gallons of diesel fuel on site and operating the way that I just said, a few hours at a time and then several hours off, um, that 60 gallons will go quite a while, a um, couple weeks at least. So um, not a bad option, but obviously you do have limited fuel based on what you have on your site. Now for pros, the biggest pro that I list here is cost. And what I mean by cost is you can go buy a generate, you know, a, a hand pull start generator from Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. And they're not, they're not cheap, but for about the same price, you can get a lot more, uh, power out, you know, uh, uh power output for the tractor, uh, for about the same price. The difference being you got to use the tractor's engine. Now this isn't necessarily a pro if you don't already have a compact tractor. If you have a compact tractor, you're already doing the maintenance and taking care of it and you have the engine there ready to go. So that brings me to my next pro is maintenance. So any other generator that you have, whether it's a standby or whether it's a pull style, you gotta do maintenance to it or it's not gonna be available when you want it. In the case of a compact tractor, at least if you're like me, you're keeping up on your maintenance, you're making sure you know all your, your fluids are changed, everything's greased, you're running this thing constantly, frequently. Um, shouldn't, knock on wood, shouldn't have an issue with availability um, in, in making sure that it starts up and runs when you need it. Um, and the, the last one that I list as a pro, and again, I'm, I'm comparing this against a standby system is that, and that it's portable. So I get all this extra power and it's still portable. I can still take it out into the woods. I can still, um, you know, I, I use the example sometimes, I built a bridge one time out in my woods and I needed power out there. So I hooked onto the generator and I took it with me. I was able to, to run a welder and some power tools and whatever I needed. So uh, just a quick list of pros and cons. Obviously you can make your own decision. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somewhat informative, maybe learned something. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I've enjoyed interacting in the comments with everybody in this channel. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.